last week we touched on the issue of the national service uh, postings and we were to have a part two of it because now a lot of you are aware or almost all of you are aware of where you're being posted to but the issue is you've got some challenges uh, let us know I'll open the phone lines really early so that you can get involved and it will be the, the show will be really about you so if you've been posted somewhere or you're having a difficult accessing or getting uh, that postings letter of yours let us know I'll open the phone lines and I'll let you know when I do but here are the numbers 0302 211 6912 0302 211 6912 my guest uh, is the PRO the National Service Secretariat uh, Ambrose Itsua and I kind of like have to smile through it every time good morning thank you for your time again good morning mm. so I'm sure you're familiar with the, the things that are coming up yes. after the postings yes. let's yes. hear some of them um, some of the challenges um, have to do with the accessing the posting letters um, some complain that they cannot go onto the net and then open the letters and print them out yeah. um, there's a very simple process we have always said that those who have some of these challenges more of them are those who did not attend orientation because at orientation we explain all these processes either they do not listen or they do not attend but it's a very simple process if you go onto the net um, there is something to click just to uh, make our our website um, activated so you can uh, print out the letters okay uh, i saw a container this is a private uh uh, business yes. that had pasted on it that you can come and yes. have it printed. Is that part of the deal? No, it's, it's, we, we are not organizing that. Individuals do that. Um, it's a way of also helping the service persons. It's like going to an internet cafe to get your um, form printed for you. There are people who have set up some of these much more businesses and then they help the service persons to print it out there. Um, upon the yeah. So indirectly, we have created jobs. Having to <laughs> but can you also, if you're having challenges and you go to the National Service Secretary, yes. can they help you? No, the difficulty is that um, <clears throat> we may not be able to help everybody who comes there because we'll be attending to people with some challenges other than the printing of the, the uh, letters. And if you come to a reception, for instance, the receptionist has just one computer. So if, if you have about 20 people at the same time, coming to access their posting. Yeah, they can queue. Yeah, no, but it's not the best of things. You can, you can go to most of the internet cafes dotted around the area to print it. But of course, it's also not our, our responsibility to print letters for you. So you just have to go. But of course, some people come. Um, if we have time, we assess them. I have printed a couple of letters for some of the people who come to my office with a difficulty. If I am less busy, and um, there's time, I would, I would go to the net. Especially for those who create the impression that we have not posted them. Some mm -hmm. come and say, no, no, my name is not there. I've said and said and said. So I call you to my office, take your NSS number, go into the system and turn and open it for you. But genuinely, there may be people who will not get posted. Oh, yes, um, it's possible. That's what I'm saying. If you come and you have not had posting, we will check. But I'm saying that in most of the cases, they, are, they don't do the right thing. But what I'll do, if I check and your form is, I will not even print it for you. I'll open it for you to see. I'll tell you, you have done the wrong to go back, open and do the right thing. We mm -hmm. expect that at that level, we should be able to do what is right. But some, perhaps, they just want to have the easy way. Yeah. Maybe some small money to pay to print at their cafe. It might be a problem, so they will come. If you have that challenge, genuinely, you tell us why. We will help you. Mm -hmm. well, the IT department is always there to you know, satisfy people's um, um, curiosity in terms of looking for they are postings and then printing out the letters. Okay. So if, if I'm not posted, I'm not on the system at all, what happens if to If I'm not posted, there could be two things. Either you did not register at all or you registered late. Now, if you register late, we are going to do a second batch of postings for late registrations. And that will come. I'm not too sure of the time because we are still compiling the, the, the list and we will we'll come out with the uh, official statement on that. But if you did not, you did not register, then we cannot post you. Mm. You'll have to wait till next year. I have to ask you this question. What is the National Service supposed to do to an individual? If you graduate, you're supposed to go on a one year. Is it one year? One year, oh, yes. Okay, one year uh, yeah. National Service. What, what, what should it do to you, the human being? And then we'll come to the country. What 
should national service do to you? Yeah. I, I, what, what should you be taking out of it? I, I still cannot understand the question, though, except that... Because you see, last week, yes. um, the, mm. I think the understanding was you may not be posted to... And I think we used accounting a lot last yeah. week. You may not be posted to do accounting. Mm -hmm. So you may not necessarily have experience yeah. on the job as an accountant. Yes. But you're still doing a certain service. Yes. Is this supposed to be a patriotic? Oh, OK, yes. Um, the underlying factor of the, the service is to give oneself up to the country, serve the nation, um, show your patriotism, show your level of commitment to the nation, and um, be selfless in terms of giving to um, the state what you have acquired throughout your period of study as, as a young person of this country. Um, I have indicated on several occasions that there are other countries where national service is taken purely on the military basis. Um, situations where the countries, such countries are in uh, constant war, war um, threats or war situations, like Israel, for instance. So you would have young people going into the military and always prepared to, to defend. If you go to Cuba, for instance, every young person is trained militarily because they're always constantly under threat from the U.S. attack. So this is the situation. In Ghana, we don't have any war situation. Ours is purely developmental. So we encourage the young people to give off Best but you also had year. plans, I remember when I was in school, to get us to do some sort of military... The military training is part of the law that established the national service. That was not meant to prepare people for war, no. The basic idea, if you, if you read the hands that, that came out of parliament during the debate for the national service law or act, uh, mainly was about keeping fiscal and then mental fitness of the young people mm. before they go into... And I guess to instill a bit more discipline. Exactly. exactly. That, was the, that was the idea, the, the brain behind that. We were looking at a situation where young people are trained in some kind of... Uh, to, be, to be conscious of certain things like timing, uh, respect for other, other people, uh, be, be, be meticulous in what you do. So, and everybody knows that in the military, they are particular about some of these things. Mm. I had opportunity of training as a cadet when I was in secondary school. And I can tell you the benefits. Um, but those who watch, I'm sure they, they know, even within the military, you hardly even get sick. When you are properly trained physically, you hardly get sick. Mm. And you're always strong. Even when you are aging, people don't see. I'm not sure you can tell my age. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't even want I'm to good. guess. So, <laughs> but I tell you, you'll be surprised. So it depends on the kind of physical fitness you've had and the mental um, alertness and discipline. So we inculcate this into the youth before they even go out and work. And uh, it's just for about six months. That was what the law actually stated. But we're doing it for about six weeks. So you, do you ever, did you start? No, yeah, we do. Well, we've done it in the past. Um, because the numbers were growing and we had um, logistical challenges, that is why we had to put it on hold. What, was this recent? Because I... Um, late 80s. Early oh, 90s. that was a long time Early ago. Early 90s. Okay. Early 90s. Um, I remember when I, when I did my national service in 1993, um, military training was still there. So 90s, mid-90s, getting to the late 90s, we had to put that one on hold because of the numbers were growing every year. And then but this was almost coming back, I, I think, in 2006 yes. or so? Yes, almost. Because we were having discussions with the military high command. But... As I said, these things go with budget. Um, you need to think of the number of people who are going there, the uniforms they will wear. If they are on the camp, the food they eat, everything is, is money. Uh, so this have. is like proper, to, it's not something you come and do every day and go back no, to your you, home? You, you, you will be camped. If let's say we are taking 1,000 people, just for the purpose of this discussion, and we group them in some of the military training centers, maybe 500 or 200, 200, 200, or 1,000 at a time at one place. They come there, they wear uniform, they are under strict military discipline, military control. Oh. They'll be there for a number of weeks, and after that, they pass out, 
and another group will come and you'll pass out. That is, is, but I'm saying that money, money, money. But do you think students will be interested? I can because tell you. Jerry might, I think a form came around. I can tell and there you. was a point where you have to take if you had yes. any sickness or disease, and everybody was quick to take that because when you do, then they will not include you in the list of those who have no, that military is, training. This is, this is voluntary. We will not force anybody. Even if you are interested in going, the military will check your health st status. They, they have some you know, parameters. If, for instance, you have some low blood pressure or high blood pressure or something, you will not be allowed to go for the military. Why? You want people to go and start collapsing on the field. Well, this is rigorous training. So they will not even allow you to go. When they check and you have certain um, diseases, maybe if you have hernia and things like that, they may not allow you to do that. But you genuinely think that students or graduates oh, will be interested? I can tell you the number of people, the interest that this has generated, the number of people who have called our offices and are willing to die. If you go through the forms that they filled, many decided that they would do the military. Film. Many, many of them. Mm. We checked. Those who take the yes. Are interested in the so how much money do you need? I can't, I can't tell for now. Um, I do not have the figures. This is money. So I, I don't want to speculate. But I'm sure that if um, we were to talk about our general budgets, you realize that generally the allowances take a lot of money from the state. Allowance alone, if you multiply it around, if you take it is by over 79,000 or so. Is this solely coming from the states? Yes, solely coming from the state. The state is actually financing fully, and that is um, together with the uh, salaries of permanent workers. Permanent workers, we are not many, just about 350 across the country, so that uh, might not be too much. But if you look at the 350 Ghana cities per person times the number of service persons times 12 months. That is but huge. you have you have mm. quite a good number also going to the private sector. Um, and this and is the first time we posted um, that quite a good number, and that is the percentage of our sixteen percent of total um, deployments. Previously, we were posting between five to ten percent of service persons. I don't know the highest we went was twelve percent or so. So, but you said this, this time around, yeah, sixteen percent of okay. the posting, and of course that one would generate some amount of money. But each person is. Uh, Getting, or we are getting seven, 70 Ghana, sorry, yeah, 70 Ghana cities per person, you know, from the private sector per month. So um, that is the what we call the 20% service charge. You can create 20% of the 350 Ghana cities, and that is paid to the secretary. That service charge and that comes as part of our income generation, which is also monitored closely by government. Okay, but those private people, you do not pay the service personnel. No, they pay them. They pay them, but still, you still have the a greater number of people who are being paid by the state. For instance, those people who to the education sector, that's about 52%. You're talking about 36,000 plus. And again, you multiply 350 Ghana by 36,000 mm. by 12 months. This number is still likely to go up because we're going to do some additional postings here and there by the next three, four weeks. But if you if you look at the sort of work that they also go to, to do, because in some places... Are you talking about the private sector? No, okay. I'm talking about right. public sure. and teaching, to be okay. specific. Sometimes mm -hmm. there are some of the schools who don't even have teachers at all. Yes. So these personnel actually fill in the position of permanent teachers. Certainly. I have always used one particular example. I had opportunity of going on some um, trek to check on what service persons were doing across the country. Uh, that, this was about two years or so ago. Went to a district or a village around, um, I don't know what is the white water or the black, or the black water, close to the uh, Burkina, so Cote d'Ivoire border mm. in the upper <laughs> west region. Um, then there is a village called Zewo Chow or something like that. I Forgive me if I have not pronounced it well. In that school, class one to class six, there were only two teachers. And um, the the person who happened to be or uh, acting as a head teacher uh, was just um, somebody who was not even a trained teacher. The other person, excuse me, was a blind man in the school. So we had three service persons there. Now, one of them was even taking two classes at a time. So the question is, what would have happened to that school and those children if we did not have the service persons mm. going there? Uh, this was, as I say, about Two or three years ago or so. Now, the story is not different for many other um, um, rural communities. And service persons go and fill these vacancies. There are cases where uh, national service persons have become head teachers of some of the basic schools. Mm. When they go there, there are no teachers. Or there are people teachers 
from the community, some of whom have not even gone to military high school. Yeah, education. but do we know if they're teaching the right things? Well, that one would be better than if their children were there and doing nothing. But in any case, let me just state that if anybody has gone through university education, we are not saying that you are a professional teacher. But for example, you, for instance, I'm sure if your son were to come home with something about what you have studied in school before, you should be able to assist your son in learning or, or, or doing some little homework and other things. My children still come to me. Even at the tertiary level, they come with study. I know you did this course. What is this? What is that? I'm not a professional teacher. But if I have the time, I'll sit there and decide, OK, let's do it this way, let's do it that way. And sometimes it helps the children. They have confidence in you as a parent. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that if you go there as a, as a university graduate, the children are looking up to you. We are not saying that it is a perfect situation, but it will be better. In any case, service persons who are posted to schools do not just go and start teaching, no. Once you get there, if there are head teachers, they are supposed to take you through orientation, maybe some in-service training, the basic rudiments of teaching, preparing of lesson notes, and things like that. Um, use this medium of language, use this, don't do that, don't do that, maybe you're dressing. The children are looking up to you. These are the petty things. I mean, you know the formative ages of the children from one to five years or so. So they will copy you and they will look at you as a role model. That one alone is important. So we are not looking at only the academic work like one plus two and two plus two and things like that. Your, your physical appearance as a person from maybe the urban center to the rural community also inspire the young people to like to grow to become yeah. somebody like you except that yeah. if you if you, if you were teaching yes. would you get clothing allowance you would not no because you'd be going to work every day no yeah we will not we will not we don't have any any special package for clothing allowance mm. but appearance matters yes, like of you course. said but if 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 you are an university graduate i'm not sure you are going to dress sharply wherever you go in any case your personal appearance is your responsibility in the first place. Um, you decided to wear this this morning. Mm. Perhaps maybe for the kind of work I decided to wear this this morning. Um, if you go to the university and you are going for lectures, nobody determines what you should wear. But you are trained such like that your parents should, should look good in the eyes of the public because you don't live on an island. You live in a society. So we are all trained even from basic secondary to the tertiary yeah, level. Yes, still we hear people yes. wear very revealing things on some of the campuses. Uh, that is for the ladies. Yes. Yes. Um, it is because, well, I'm not an educationist, so I, I, I would I, I'll be handicapped in dealing with uh, such such an issue. But I think that uh, because there seems to be some little control, no control at all. But for instance, when I was an university, I remember one lecturer walked out a lady from a club from a, her, his, his lecture hall. That you can't come to my lecture with this kind of thing. So you go out, go and change and come. I'm not sacking you, but change and come. If you decide not to come again, that is your problem. Yeah. Even that one, he was flat for that because he said, well, this is university campus is freedom of everything. But there are laws, rules and regulations in the society. Obscenity is, a, is, is an offense mm. under the yes. laws of this country. So people should also know. Now, even in teaching, I, I taught as a people teacher when I finished my whole level. And when I finished my GIG as a student, as a journalist, I was supposed to teach in the classroom. I taught English language. And I remember very well that in all these, we are taught how to present oneself to the, to the public. You don't, you don't just dress anyhow. As I said, people are watching you. Even the young people are watching you. Yeah, because I'm looking at the, the situation where people in the urban centers will carry themselves to some of these rural areas. and the, the little children are supposed to look up to them as yes. role models, and yes. everything and anything they do would seem right in their eyes. And of so course, it's it's, um, it's it's likely that it will happen like that. Um, even if you have maybe, and I'm not condemning anybody, if you have about five earrings, they will think that is fashion, is correct. So you may end up getting the children learning, and very soon some of them will be doing that. But I know in the education sector, for instance, they are particular about teachers. Maybe they will not even allow you to wear some long. Yeah, ring it mm -hmm. for a lady. So it means that the, like that the headmasters, yeah. the headmistresses are going to be checking on Exactly. They are, they are going to be very particular about that. I but does the National Service uh, Secretariat work with CHAS closely? Or yes, they, yes. You know? um, the district directors of education work with our district directors of national service. 
a hand in hand. That is why when we post people to the schools, one of the appointment letters is supposed to go to the Ghana Education Service for them to know the number of service persons who are coming into the district, into the schools to teach. So they can also monitor. If, for example, a head teacher realizes that you are teaching something that is you know, totally offline, he has a responsibility to draw attention to that. Okay. Because he has to supervise you. If it, if it is something that cannot be corrected because you have become adamant, he has to report to this right of national service. In the worst scenario, we will draw you from the school. Okay. Let me open the phone lines now. Uh, give us a call on 0302-211-6912. 0302-211-6912. Strictly questions with regards national service. And it will be good if you were posted this year and you're going somewhere. Somebody sent a message on our Facebook page. Uh, Nan Kwanduru is too far, you're saying. <laughs> but is there something like too far... It's a very good question you've asked. Um, where is too far in Ghana? There are Ghanaians, and there are Ghanaians there. They eat, they drink, they breathe, they work, they do everything. Maybe they are farmers. That is the objective of national service. Where it might not be too palatable in terms of the conditions, mm. um, we will want service persons, Ghanaian you, to go and assist them. Let's not forget, not too long ago, there were young people from the universities who went to the bushes to carry cocoa. That was some form of national service, duty hmm. to the country. Yeah. Let, me sp let me speak to Jonathan. Okay. He's joining us from Elmina. Hello, Jonathan. Good morning. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? I'm calling from, I'm Jonathan. I'm calling from Atabade. Okay. Let's hear you. Okay, I did my national service last year, and my... July and August salary has not been paid. I did it. The district is at the Boise. I want to find out the reason why I have not been paid. Okay, so can I ask, when was the last time that you checked? Hello, Jonathan? Yes, uh, today. Yesterday yes. I called the office. Okay, so what, what exactly did you do? You, were you teaching? Hello? Yeah, I was teaching. Okay. All right, we'll find some answers for you. He hasn't been paid July, August. But before you answer that, let me speak to Majid, uh, who's joining us from somewhere in the northern region. Good morning, Majid. Good morning. Yes, sir. If you can speak up a bit for me. Yes, my name is Majid. I'm calling from Michigan. Okay. Yes. Thank you I for study, calling. I'm not a national service guy. I'm a teacher. Okay. Mm, and I really, I have some of your, I have some of your uh, series of national management. I really advocate that way. Okay. From that, yes. Mm. And well, we uh, give us educated people again. Oh, some okay. Some of them are doing very well. Okay, that, that's good to hear. So which school is this? We're even, we're even thinking if we could at least maintain that guy. But <laughs> they did a fantastic job. Mm. So let, let, let me understand, though. Are these people from uh, Kumasi or the Ashanti region, from Greater Accra, from where? Or they are from the north? Yes, they are from the north, but one of them is from Bolga. Okay. And the other guy is from Papadi. Okay. So I asked yeah, about the West, school. West Rider. Sorry. So what's the name of the school where you teach? Uh, it's Matriya Gina High Okay. All right, Majid. Thank you very much. Uh, the National Service person had you. Okay, so, so that's uh, somebody appreciating the, the people that you posted and saying that yes. they're doing a good job. Yes, but we've somebody... had a number of um, um, commendations like that from uh, across the country. But to respond to the Yeah, amount you haven't paid. Is it uh, June, July? It's not it's July, August. July, it's August. It's not even everybody. August, uh, August is the leave, isn't it? Yeah, it's the leave. I will still okay. have to pay them the allowance. Yeah. That is what the arrangement talks about. And then we pay them TNT. I don't know. I'm not sure he has taken his TNT either because TNT goes with the August allowance. Uh, there was a little delay, uh, which we have explained. Um, but now we have issued out checks to all the arena directors. Uh, I've explained on other platforms that uh, checks were issued last week, I think Friday or so. Um, it takes about sometimes 24 hours, sometimes 48, working hours, you know, so the weekends will not be included. 
uh, we are having the information that by tomorrow, God willing, all these checks would have been cleared. So district directors would then go for their checks from their various regions, regional directors, and process the payment of allowances for those who have not taken their July and August at TNT. Others who have taken their July already, they will take August and TNT together. We are hoping that by the close of this week, all these things will be a thing of the past. Okay, but how widespread is this situation? Uh, let me speak to Anyas and okay. then you can answer that. Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir, good morning. We can hear you now. Yeah, my name is Anyas, calling from the Ibu of Memo, near Jakubu, in the center of Ghana. Okay. Yeah, in fact, um, Mr. Ambrose was saying, uh, he was talking about the food. In fact, some of the places that majority of us are distant are very, very bad. Bad road system, no electricity, even water is a problem. How are we going to live in that community? Although we know there are some people living there, it's true. Mm -hmm. for, uh, for me, as an, as an example, I was at Kaswa near Accra. That was where I was. I went to Phuket College of Education. I was posted to a place known as Seiko. And to be honest with you, the car normally goes there once. And for where I am, and then to the school, in fact, it's about seven miles. So you see, sometimes some of these problems, in fact, you send someone there, that person is supposed to go and serve there. And due to the conditions that he or she finds himself in the wildlife well, service, it's not even 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 helping the the, the mother Ghana. So please, I will, I will, I will, I will plead with Mr. Ambrose that if possible, we should be sent to a place where we will feel comfortable at least, and then get that zeal out of us to do the work. If not, my daughter of us are not doing the work. I'm telling you the truth. So is your, is your, is your service off. over? Is your service over yet? Oh, my service is over. Okay. My service, my service is over. But did you, I did you truthfully, I mean, with all the challenges, did you truthfully stay all through the time? Yes, I did. I did. In fact, I was suffering a lot. So even the community people there were saying that I'm the only person who came there and began to stay there. Okay. But I was there even throughout the vacation. I was just trying to experience some life, but in fact, the challenges that I find myself in, well, all God knows. Okay, but did it did it make you a better person in the end? Oh no, 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 no! I don't think so. Okay, all right. So because I have some rashes all over my body because of the water that I was using there. Wow. Okay. Thank you very but, much. Uh, Thank you for you sharing welcome, uh, your experiences. Right. This is not good. Yeah, it's it's not a peculiar situation. Um, we've had this before. Um, it happens almost every year. I'm not saying that we have a perfect situation, no. Uh, this is a typical national service person. Uh, with all the challenges he did, he did his national service. Yeah, but uh, now he's, his, ha his, his, his having to live with... Yeah, uh, uh, the scratches. Mm -hmm. They will go away very soon. I can assure him, the scratches will go away very soon. These are temporary. Uh, is no, there some I'm sort saying, of compensation let, let, package? Let, before before that, let, let me, I'm not downplaying what he has said. It's very important that he has actually brought out that issue. I'm saying that we are aware some of, some of these things do exist. I was making a point before we picked the call that mm -hmm. some of our young people at the time went to the uh, villages, the bushes, to carry cocoa. A number of them had similar, very unfavorable conditions to live in. I'm saying that if we are giving a service to the nation, some of these things are bound to happen. I'm not saying that uh, we would deliberately send people to go and suffer. Like you said, no electricity, yes. No, no water. water. Yes. I'm talking Bad of, roads. I'm, not, I'm talking of portable water, maybe pipe borne water. No. Uh, bad roads. Yes. They are there. Maybe dusty roads and things like that. Now, it is, that is why some of them say it is national suffering or national <laughs> punishment. Oh, so you've heard. Oh, you said, but I did my <laughs> national service. So I know what it's all about. So, uh, but if you don't like different. the place, can you opt out? No. You can opt if, out on certain conditions, so certain situations. For instance, if somebody has has um, asthma and is posted to very dusty area and there's evidence that a person is at asthmatic immediately we change the person from there because we don't need anybody to go and have an attack okay i have sense. kwame and then i have uh, julius i'll speak to julius first good morning julius yeah good morning yes sir let's hear yeah. you uh as a first personnel you're serving the nation 
So wherever they post you, you have to go and see it. It's a life experience job. I was posted, I'm from where I was posted far away. I went and did the job. The job. So all those complaining, they didn't know. They are serving Malagana. So for the one year, wherever they, 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 are, they, they find themselves, they are going to learn. So let me explain to them, it's for, it's for one year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Julius. Now, Kwame Yaboa, good morning. Well, how are you? Yes, Kwame. How are you doing today? Yes, I'm doing well. How are you? I am well. We thank God. Let's hear you. You are in Obuasi, right? Yes, I'm in Obuasi. Okay, cool. Yes, the um, sanitizer has been going on for a long time. That's something that I observed. The other thing, when they open the time for us to come and register, you go and see a lot of folks doing the Yesterday, somebody went there for the whole day, stood in the sun, and just come back. And today, too, when we went in the morning, we are not that few, and that's we like stay for almost a whole day. And nobody will, will attend to you for the next even day. You have to even use three days, and like if you are not in the same time where you are doing the registration, the TNT and the post. I'm, I don't know, it's something about this Ghanaian system. I want to ask the boss, is it, is it the best for us to go and do almost every day for almost three days before you get Just to get your letters, right? Uh, yeah, let, no, just get like your name registered. Okay. So, no. Letters, so, letters you had printed it from the net. Uh huh. So, I don't know why is it that we have given almost for three good days before you register. Okay, so Kwame, let me, get, let me get this right. When you print it, you still have to go to the office to go and register? Yeah, you have to send me to the, to the original um, office to register. Okay. And All when right. you go there, the number of people there, you can imagine. Mm. I get you. Yeah. But don't give up. Thank you for sharing, yeah. though. Okay, so do you have to go and queue for that long? And he says yeah. something which is really important. What if you're not from, you know, the center yeah. of the town? Let me, let me address the previous uh, caller's issue. I, Julius. I, I for, forget. Um, the issue, no, somebody, I'm happy somebody is talking about his experience, saying that it's good that you go and serve your, 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 your country. The issue about electricity, water, even in urban areas, everybody gets electricity. That does not mean that you must not get it. But it should not be an excuse to say, because there's no electricity, I'm not going. In any case... Hey, but how you, do you live in a place, especially when you've is, lived that, all your life in a place where you have that electricity, is the experience, and you have a phone, me, you, that, you, ha you yes, have a computer that is the you can't use? That's the experience you go through to feel what other people also feel as Ghanaians. So that one day, when you become a policymaker, or when you get to a position where you can influence policies, you will think about those who are going through that process. But you should be given you know, a bit more compensation to such persons. Well, for, for national service, we don't have that, 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 that program. Um, that should be something that should be discussed by the state. If the state decides through parliament that people posted to rural areas should get something extra than what um, the normal allowances are, why? We cannot say no. We will give it to them. Because that I can't imagine skin. a young lady, you have to go to the salon to go and do your hair, and you have to walk, was it seven miles he was talking you know, about? Yes. I, I, I mean, there are so many that's things what I'm saying that, you see, with. Our situation is quite different. In areas where um, we, you have some huge challenges, where you are even uh, under threat of war, you might not even be thinking about salon. You even think about it. When there's always bombardment, like in Israel, you don't have time yeah, for Yeah, but that. this is no, Ghana, that is and why this I'm is 21st that, century. Exactly, Exactly, but we are people in those areas who need help, who are also Ghanaians. I'm saying that go and serve the nation for just one year. When you finish, you come back, and you can have all the luxuries, all the comfort to yourself. Mm -hmm. But that, 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 that is a debate, a deb debatable issue anyway. Yeah. People think that, irrespective of that, we should give them their comfort. We are not disputing that. We do not have it now to give them the best of accommodation the way they want it, with the, with the closet in the villages and all that. But maybe gradually we'll get it. Let us also not forget that the numbers are increasing every day. So that is also uh, posing a huge challenge. Now, having said that, let me come to the... Nana Kwame, who is in Obuase, who's had, you know, going to queue for but my days sister, my sister, just to get his registration. This issue, I, sometimes I do not even understand. You have decided to go there. Somebody has also decided to go there. Everybody is deciding to go there. But is that another option? No, no, no. And I will explain. The letters must be signed by the regional directors mm -hmm. on behalf, for and on behalf of the executive director. The executive director actually is supposed to sign an appointment letter. But he cannot, uh, one person, sign 71,000. So he has given a mandate to all the regional directors to sign for 
the executive director. Now, how is he going to sign on, on, on online? Everybody is saying that, oh, why don't you do the registration online? Apart from that, we need to... Just scan the signature, you know, and put it on the, now, on, on the letters. Do you know what is happening even today? People are scanning. That day you were reading posting to mortuary. People are scanning appointment letters, doctoring postings, and putting it out there. So why, why don't you, that I'm sure one. there's a secretary, why don't you get all printed? Oh, you, he sits you, and then he signs good, and people that, just come no, and then, you know, take that it. That is what is happening. They are not giving the proof picture. When you go there, we have, even at the, at the registration center, last week I said, get your newsman to go around. Even at the registration center, we have those registering from pr for private posting from public posting so that you don't mix them up now you go through the process of registration because we do identification we want to be sure that the person standing before me is the right person we have posted because we have had cases of impersonation in the past we want to be sure that these are the right people who have been posted to the national center and that is why they're supposed to come with their id cards to show are you going to scan the id card and show it on, on online People can do all sorts of things like that. So how, how many days should it take you, you we, know, to we, duly we, register? We do not have any time. That is why, look, everybody wants to rush and do it the first day. That is what is creating the problem. I can tell you after one week, you go there and there's nobody there. Mm. But registration doesn't take one week. We are going to register from now even up to December. It is because they themselves have posted things on the social media that you have only one week to register. If you don't register... You are out of national service. Oh, Who so there's that? no deadline. They have given themselves the deadline. Okay. And everybody is rushing. So when you go to the, from here, I'm going to a regional office to monitor what is going on. I can tell you, you cannot even get a space to, 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 to step. And that is the problem they are creating for themselves. Because we are not asking everybody to come today and register. Okay. You have today, even up to the 20th, to register, to qualify, to take your, your month allowance. Mm. So why are you in a, in a rush to get there? And that is why they are spending the two days there. Because if you have posted... Close to 22,000 people to Greater Accra. In any case, everybody wants to be in Accra. Okay. And you have, had, you have had a lack of being posted to Accra. Mm. So when you are there, everybody goes there. Imagine if 10,000 people at one center registry. You expect that the people doing the registration will be able to, because they will take a photograph, they have to register in the book, sign. And are you going to sign on the, on, on the net? Everybody will sign on the net. How yeah. are you going to do that? So this they must understand and do not condemn the system, please. Okay, so uh, I think that we've done um, justice, I want to use the word, uh, to this. Thank you so much for your time. Two weeks in a row. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate welcome. your presence. Thanks a lot. And hopefully you're satisfied. And, um, oh, Kwame Eboa, you don't have to do it today. You have, you know, much more time. So just relax. Don't go and queue there. I'll come back with Roland <laughs> and wrap this all up for you.